This video demonstrates the software artifact assisted freedom that has been created to help carers look after people with either dis disabilities or elderly people. It is an assisted living type of application. It is based around the idea that by monitoring the electricity that someone uses gives us an idea of how well or what are they what they are doing. The system uses a off-the-shelf current electricity monitor from current cost. More than a million of these devices have been sold. The devices work by using a current clamp on the uh, electricity cables at the switchboard or meter, a current clamp device, and two of the transmitters of this data are shown here. So the current clamp is behind the switchboard, the wire you can see coming out, the transmitter transmits the data to a display. The display is there so the user can see how much electricity they are being used, they are, they are using. There are also devices that replace this that are a socket at the wall and can monitor individual appliances. The data can be sent to the current costs database in the cloud known as Zively via the user's internet connection. The software artifact that we have created runs on Google App Engine cloud service. This software regularly collects the data from Zively and stores the data and also makes decisions on whether to send an alert. The alerts can be sent directly to the carer via email. We can also send daily messages to say the system is working. From an ethical point of view, we also wish to ask the system user if they are okay before we talk to the carer. This is done using the Twilio voice and text system. Twilio have an API that enables us to make calls to people. If the system believes there is a problem, it can call the system user and ask them if they are okay. If they are, they just hang up. And the carer will not be aware that this has happened. If they do not answer the phone, then the carer will be sent a message to say there seems to be a problem or if the system user answers the phone and does require assistance they stay on the line and they will be connected to the carer um, directly so they can carry out a conversation. I will now sign into the application on Google Cloud. First of all I will sign in as the creator of the application, the default sign in. We use Google authentication similar to OAuth. What this does is tell our software the email address of the currently confirmed signed in person to the browser and then I can use that email address to decide what to display to this user. In this case we have one button that allows us to create administrators. So we have one, one administrator, Isabel Pickering. I will now sign out and we can sign back in again.
as that administrator. So now we see that different information is displayed. This administrator can set up organizations. We have um, one set up here correctly and one test one. I can just remove the test one. You can also see that organizations can have a balance. This can be done to add credit and the idea is that we can now charge organizations for using the service. We can charge based on each time an alert is sent out. Organizations can have carers. Here we see we have one carer. We need to know um, information about their phone. And other information where we talk about super carers or the only carer for that particular organization. So we would add carers via this screen and we choose which organization they belong to. I will now sign out. I will now sign in as a carer. So the carers can see different information. We can see who the users are for this organization, the meters and triggers. The, there is one user currently entered for this organization. We need to know their phone number so that they are able to be contacted. We can send them alerts by text or SMS. We can call them. Uh, sorry, we can call the carer um, or we can call the user. And we can set the number of um, alerts per day in case we chance overloading them with too many alerts. The meters represent the electricity meters. The current cost meter comes with um, serial number for which an access key and feed is required to access the data um, securely accessed over HTTPS and what we have done in this application is make it easy to say which circuit is being monitored for one meter we can choose um, which circuit so the first one is the total house power and in a situation where we're working with a um, organization Habitat for Humanity they want to use the one meter to monitor multiple people so we can choose the user that this circuit is for here we're using um, the light circuit so we can say this will be monitoring the same person we can also monitor individual appliances so if we want to monitor the jug or the TV microwave oven for example and we can save that The triggers are the brains, the logic. Um, typically a user will be monitored for the day from 8 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock at night and we might want to compare this with um, what we'd be expecting them to use. Uh, let's say we want to add another trigger. We do it via this tab choose the user again we will only see the users for the organization that we are a carer for let's say we want to monitor um, breakfast time six in the morning to maybe ten o'clock and we want to see 
if the user has um, had um, a cup of tea or coffee, they've boiled the jug or kettle, we can say the jug is likely to be over 500 watts. We choose the jug and then we're going to compare, um, use this comparison where we say if it's not above that value in the last 24 hours. Uh, in fact, what it will do is look back 24 hours for one of these um, periods and then just look at what happens in that period. Again, we don't want too many alerts if um, it determines it needs to send multiple alerts, we can limit the number. So we'll add this trigger and then we can see that we've now created a new trigger. Okay. Uh, that's basically the core of the application. I will now sign out. I will now sign in as the system user. We have a very basic screen for the system user. Uh, looks like my authentication is working. If the system user wishes to um, stop being monitored for a period, they can use this screen. For example, if they know they're going away, if they know they're having a party, if they know they're going to sleep in, they can choose to have monitoring stopped. So at the moment, I'll say that I don't want to be monitored for the next two days and then this time will be used to determine when alerts will start to be sent out again if they need to be. The application was created using Eclipse and the Java programming language. Google App Engine provides a plugin to connect Eclipse to Google App Engine for easy deployment. I will demonstrate some of the features of the software in how they are implemented in the code. The method for obtaining the data from the Zively website is done via a cron job. Here we can see the file that is used to tell Google App Engine what to do. We have one cron job that says every five minutes run this code. And we also have another cron job that does a check to see if the system is working. Every 60 minutes it checks to see if it is alive. So if we look at now the software or the code that runs every five minutes, we have a servlet uh, that eventually calls this one here. So every five minutes we run this code to get the readings from Cosm or Zively. There is a process of going through the meters, collecting the data and storing the data into the database. Here we can see a typical scenario if we are wanting to monitor someone at night time. The plug that you can see at the socket is monitoring the electricity usage and sends the data to the display for upload to the website. Here we will see how the person's home phone or mobile phone is called. In this example, the user decides that they do want help, so they do not hang up. Stay on the line if you would like some help. Or if you are okay, just 
hang up now. The two phones are now connected, allowing a conversation. This is a screenshot of the database in the Google App Engine. You can see that the data that was collected from the electricity measurements has been stored and this is what is used to create the alert. In this case, bedside lights were a reading of 7 watts. More details about this work can be found in the literature in the Journal of Applied Computing and Information Technology Following this URL, the paper, a minimally intrusive monitoring system that utilizes electricity consumption as a proxy for well-being.